Connected to pilot edge. Alaska 266, turn left heading of 030. This is vectors 4, sequencing, climate team, audible 100. Do it again for Alaska 266. Alaska 266, turn left heading of 030. Heading 030, Alaska 266. Alaska 1080, contact North Calico, 124.32. 2432, Alaska 1082. North Calico, Alaska 3284, 1,700 to 3,000. Scout 3284, North Carolina Fire Security Contact, and uh, climate team 4000. 4000, South Pacific 234. Alaska 266, verify sign out to Climate 190. Climate 190, sign Alaska 266. Approach by Station 420, Echo Hotel, uh, through 4000 for 5000. Station 420, Echo Hotel, North Cal Approach, uh, Roger. FedEx 3059, heavy clear direct tip ring. What a tip ring, FedEx 3059. Number 420, Hotel, a flight heading of 360, and this is vectors for Sacramento, climate maintain, audible 190. 100, and heading 3600, Hotel. Cal United 624 is uh, 400, and climate via the City 3. United 624, North Carolina Parkshire, ready to contact. Climb 18, Puddle 100. Climb in all this weight on my app here rear cargo 22 pounds 40 pounds um, row one 170 that's just easy I have an app for all this weight and balance stuff is pretty cool Twenty-eight, row two, two oh two, one sixty-four, two oh five, and one twenty-two. It's four, five, six. Right. Take off weight sixty six fifty one. Yep, that's within four, so we're good there. Okay, cool. Hop inside, we'll shut this door.
Got to press the brakes and then put the park brake on. If you use this iPad, you got to make sure that the cursor is not on there because if it is, none of your number keyed views, like these views won't work if you have the cursor lit up on the iPad. That drove me crazy one day until I figured out why I couldn't look around. All right, we're set up on fuel. I don't need a GPU. Let's check our, um, let's check our maintenance. So my engine is good. Landing gear is good. Brakes are good. Electronics are good. The battery is good. Avionics, lighting, airframe's good. I haven't busted anything. Oxygen tank is good. Maintenance log, we just did all change. So we are good. Let me remove those chalks. Close her up. Fuel cutoff, it's on the right tank. All these are down, except for ignition. Go to battery. Tahoe weather. Wind one eight zero. Um, nav light. It's 36 degrees Fahrenheit at, um, uh, Lake Tahoe. Warning, okay. It's a pretty cool airport. It's freeware. Requires a bunch of libraries. Comes with its own ortho. You gotta flatten the airport if you have you gotta use this mesh, that's why it's all weird right there. It's the only way that this scenery works. I'll right, we'll turn on a pulse light. I will let others know we are going to start our engine. Ox BP is on. So we're going to add fuel at uh, anything above 13 NG. We'll abort if. ITT goes above 950. It can go above 900 for up to five seconds. If after I add fuel, if I need to abort, I will do fuel cutoff and not the abort switch. I need 25 NG within 30 seconds, 53 NG within 60. ITT is less than 150, so we're good to start. Get the timer ready. Starter coming on. It's 11, 12, 13, 14, low idle. ITT's coming up. We got 25 NG within 25 seconds. We're good there. ITT is falling at about 42 NG. We'll get another um, spike in ITT when the second nozzle opens up. There's 42, 43. ITT will spike. All right. There's 43. Restart that. Inert separator. 
can close. That takes about 45 seconds. Do the generator amps are coming up. Auto, auto, auto. High idle. And flight idle. All right. Good start. M9, how you doing there, bud? Watching, not listening, keeping me entertaining during the morning meeting? Heck yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, so we'll come down here. Do bleed, pressure, environment. Standby gen test. Turn the pulse off. Seventy five, both tanks are good on fuel. Oxygen coming on. Revisionary screen backup works. Bring up the next rad. Electrical, fuel. File this. Get our slant golf. Twenty nine ninety eight. I'll double check that. And the winds, we're going to do a circling approach probably. All right, so Tahoe. AWAS 124.72. South Lake Tahoe weather. Wind 190 at 7. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 4,800 few. 32,000 broken. Temperature 2. Dew point minus 10. Lake Tahoe 62.68. So that's good. 2.70. 2.70. Winds 190 at 7, so we're going to have a little bit of a tailwind. Tahoe weather. Wind 190 at 7, visibility more than 10. 121.5 is guard, so we'll monitor guard on COM 2. CTAF is 122.85. And 
22.2 is to get our clearance. It's pretty cloudy, so I think I'm going to do the RNAV departure. Um, we'll go ahead and get our clearance then. Hey Gizmo, long time no see, bud. Getting all ready for Christmas. Two point two. This is how we simulate making a phone call to Oakland Center. Afternoon, Oakland Center, TBM 1399 are on the ground at Lake Tahoe, uh, IFR, Palo Alto. <coughs> Sky 3325, thanks, contact Seattle, correction, Salt Lake City Center, 133.25. Of course, I stepped on someone. Nerd Bart, what's up, bud? Long time no see for you as well. TBM 1399, Oakland Center, standby. I'm the only flight simmer in the world that doesn't own this plane. Yeah, I know. I was a, a late owner of it as well. I think uh, it was out for several months before I picked it up. And uh, I only did, I, I had a choice between this one and the Epic G1000. They both came out. to Palo Alto Airport, Richie 6 departure, Spook, transition, then it's filed. Climb via the SID. Accept. Maintain flight level 220. Departure with Oakland Center 132.2. Squawk 5157. Hold for release. Clear to Palo Alto via Ritchie 6 departure. Spook transition then is filed. Uh, climb via the SID. Accept. Maintain flight level 220. Oakland <coughs> departure. Sorry, 132.2, squawk 5157, and hold for release, TBM 1399. TBM 1399, a read back is correct. How long will you need? Uh, no more than 15 minutes. Number 1399, Roger, just call back on this frequency then when you're short of the runway first in line for departure. Will do, uh, TBM 1399. Okay, um, so let me enter that in real quick. But. Yeah, it took, so I had the, before I forget, the Epic came out and this came out at the same time. I had the Epic E1000 version, so anyone that owned that got a discount on the G1000 version, which was a, a much better model, in my opinion. So since I had a coupon, I think I paid like $30 for the new Epic G1000. So they're both basically the same plane, except I find out that the Epic G1000 is actually much faster than this, like way faster than this plane. Um, I also like the Epic G1000 a lot better for the alias on FS Economy, so I use the TBM850 with the Epic, and uh, I don't use this plane for FS Economy uh, for a couple reasons. But, so... I had bought that and then uh, and then I bought this a couple months ago. Finally, I finally picked it up. So I like it. It's very simple plane, so it's not my favorite just because it's so simple. Like the King Air has a lot of switches and a lot of stuff to do. My 
airliners have a lot of stuff to do. This thing is like up and running with a couple throws of a switch, you know what I mean? So it's great. The flight model is awesome. I mean, the whole plane is awesome. Um, uh, it's, it's really worth it, especially if you're wanting uh, just to concentrate on ATC type stuff and not having to learn an airplane. This airplane is really simple to learn. So, so I don't call myself a liar. Let me get this flight programmed in. So menu, we're going to go delete. And we're going to do well, what's the flight plan? Let's do this. Let's do a procedure, a departure. Or G6, spook, load, and then that's going to take a second to load. And then we'll go menu and we're going to load an airway, which is uh, Victor 28. And that lets off at LIN. load that and then we're going to go from LIN to SJC SJC San Jose and then from San Jose we will be at KPAO Palo Alto Altitude for pa Palo Alto, we'll say 4,500. I'll say 4,500 for San Jose. Five. Enter that. That'll give us our descent profile. So we're clear to, I think we have to pass something at 12,000. Let me look at this. Yeah, we have to be at 12,000 at Ritchie, so I'll bring this up to 12,000. So we'll do heading, vertical speed. 2,000 feet per minute. And we're going to heading 330. Okay. The arrival field is showing three for PAO, so that's correct. Do flaps for takeoff. They're going down. Trimmed for takeoff. Transponder. Five one five seven. To altitude. Turn 
terrain. Temperature in the cabin. It's 21, so we're good there. Get the weather. 29.95. So let's do that. Do that. 29.95. So we are all set. Do taxi light on. What's your favorite FSC plane? I'd have to say the uh, the Epic G1000, actually, because you can hold six passengers, and it's super fast. It cruises at, like, 250 indicated, um, and that's in, like, 19,000 feet, 20,000 feet. So it's super fast. Um, it's the same alias as this TBM, and this TBM will do, like, 210 knots at that same altitude so in the fuel burn is basically the same so really to me the best fs economy plane is the uh the epic the arabesque epic g1000 uh that's just my opinion for quick fast flights and it's ga and they're cheap to rent yeah that's the best one all right um uh, like Tahoe CTAF 12285. Lake Tahoe traffic TBM 139 ta taxiing to runway 36 from West GA Lake Tahoe. Uh, I'll turn that off. Is it fun to fly? Oh yeah. Yeah, the uh, the Epic. If you look at, um, when you have time, look at my YouTube channel. What I do um, after my streams, not every single one, but a, a vast majority of them, I'll upload my stream to my YouTube channel and then I c categorize all my flights into airplanes. So you look on my YouTube, um, Here, I'll see if I can find it on this. So I have like playlists that are airplane specific. So for example, um, whoops. Keep clicking on the thing that I don't want to. That's a clips. I've got, looks like three. See if this link works for you. So that should bring you to the playlist on my YouTube channel for the playlist for the, uh, the Epic G1000. So that's, it's fun to fly. It's got a lot. It's very similar to the TBM. Um, the TBM is a more in-depth system aircraft, so that you know this Hot Start TBM is way better with systems than the Epic. But the Epic is fun, is fun to fly, and I prefer it 
for the uh, FS economy over this plane. Uh, but I've got three three streams that I uploaded to my YouTube channel. It's Chase 1399 uh, Aviation. And I've got, yeah, it looks like I have three uh, Arabesque Epic G1000 videos on there. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. That way you'll, you probably have to hit the little bell thing too, so you know when I upload new new content. Rolls. Do a feather test. And the startup process on the, the Epic G1000 is a little bit more fun for a fun factor, I, I guess, than this plane. Takes a, like another step or two to actually start the Epic, so you got a little bit of entertainment in that way. We're going to have a little bit of a tailwind on this departure. Pulse and strobes, so they are all lit up. Twenty-two trimmed. There's no cast messages. So this departure calls for heading three three zero. Okay. My VR is going to be 85 knots. Oakland Center, TBM 1399er on the ground at Lake Tahoe, number one, runway 36. For departure now, clearance is void if not off by one niner three eight Zulu. Time now one niner two eight. If not off by nineteen thirty eight, call back with your intentions. No later than nineteen forty. Frequency change approved. If not off by nineteen forty, I'll advise with the frequency change approved one three nine nine. All right, so now we go back to CTAF and departure is one thirty two two. Do 132 two are set up, so we got CTAF and Oakland Center for departure. 85 on the roll, winds 13 knot, 13 knot tailwind. This is not, I wouldn't try to land this way, but actually, let me see something. Runway 36. Yeah. Oh well. Lake Tahoe traffic TBM 1399 are taking off runway 36 for the Ritchie 6 departure. Lake Tahoe traffic. All right, no one's landing. We're good there. Bring that 
RPMs to 1900. Add in some torque. That's 85, rotate. That's what happens with a tailwind. All right. Go nav. Lake Tahoe traffic, TBM 139, passing through 7,800, last call, departing to the north, Lake Tahoe. All right, so now they know we have departed. So I'm gonna go to Oakland Center. Gear is up, flaps are up. Gear is up. Open up the inert separator. The all damper is on. Oakland Center, TBN 1399er, Richie 6, passing through 10,000. For flight level 200, climbing via the SID. Number 1399 Oakland Center, radar contact 18 southeast of the Squaw Valley VOR. Climb and maintain flight level 220. Climb and maintain flight level 220, Uh, okay, you used a TBN designation when flying the Epic on FSC? Yes. Yeah, so when you choose your, you know, the alias, as long as the aircraft is within the same fuel um, consumption and, and the, you know, the ability, you know, how much fuel you can load and such as that, then you can fly the, uh, the alias. So that, uh, that, Epic G1000, you just use the TBM 850 alias, um, the same as you would on the TBM 900, and it works just, just the same. So there's, there's no issues there. So it performs about the same. Yeah, I, w I would say that the fuel burn is, it's it, it's almost identical to the TBM. You know, if you look at the... Uh, three nine or nine or turn left heading 180 when able to direct spook. Left turn 180 when able direct spook. 1399, thank you. 
right, let's just go one eight zero. One eight zero heading. And then once we get turned around a little bit, I'll change that. We're gonna go flight level change and we'll put that to 130 knots. Add in some torque. All right. Change that to standard. Standard flight plan spook menu activate direct activate contact Salt Lake Nav. flight plan. Here we go. Now we're tracking. 3525 Salt Lake City Tower, wind 1104, only 16 left, clear to land. Cabin pressure, differential 5.1, we can be up to 6.1. Cabin pressure is climbing, so we're good there. So, yeah, so the G1000... The Epic performs like if you look at the FS economy, the fuel burn, it's you could use that as your baseline. The the main benefit for the Epic compared to using this TBM 900 is the speed, because as far as FS economy is concerned, they're both the same aircraft, and um, but the Epic is just super fast, like. 250 260 knots in the epic and and it will climb like a rocket ship too way faster than this plane so the performance on the on the uh, epic is just way better it's way faster um, but if you want system depth and enjoyment for flying an airplane of this class then the TBM 900 is a lot more fun to fly when you're talking about systems um, just let me know when you have it. But the uh, the Epic is better for FS economy for sure. You've been enjoying the uh, King Air th uh, Super King Air 350 on FSE, yeah. Yeah, the King Air 350 is my favorite GA plane. My favorite airliner, obviously, is the Airbus, um, the A320 Flight Factor. Delta but the Airfoil Labs King Air is my favorite GA. Um, and then for fun, I'd say the Epic is probably the next in line for fun um, because of the speed and the agility and all that stuff. And then the... Uh, what's that other one that I really like? The... Oh, uh, check. I fly like 11 airplanes. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. The Twin Cessna 310 uh, digital rel replica makes a uh, 310 L version. I flew that yesterday. So I think I uploaded that to my YouTube channel as well yesterday. And that is a very, very fun airplane. November 7, 5, Quebec Alpha. Thank you. And the texture work, you know, on both uh, the Epic and this, they're both really good. And the guy that did this, um, he just updated this, and he's increased the texture work. So the texture work in this airplane is actually better than it, it was. And it was already really good, but it's even better now. 
But yeah, I agree, man. Uh, the King Air 350 is just, it's an awesome, awesome plane. Say again? Number 75, Quebec Alpha, only 25 at Alpha 2 Taxi. But see, in the Alpha Epic, two. I'd be doing about 240 by now. This thing is going to get maybe 210 got knots. 25, 25 I'm at 100. I'm going to have to back down the torque a little bit. So, I mean, the ground speed is good. You're at 271 knots across the ground. You know, and that's knots. Um, so that's uh, 272. So that's 313 miles per hour across the ground. So we're moving pretty good. There's another TBM in the air. But yeah, system depth. If you want a realistic experience in an airplane this style, then the TBM would be the way to go. If you want fast FS economy and make quick money, then the Epic. Like if you're more into FS economy than flying online like me, and if you had a choice between this and the Epic, then I would go with the Epic, you know, every single time for FS economy. For flying like I'm doing today, just for flying for fun, then naturally I'd pick the TBM because the system depth is just way better. So it's just, you know, what you're looking, what you're looking to get out of it. That's why I have both now, because they both have their ups and downs. Like with this one, once you load, I can't look at the payload now, but once you load it with FS Economy, it will block your ability to add or take away passenger weight. Where every other airplane that I have, the King Air, um, the Epic, uh, the twin Cessna, every single plane that I use on FS Economy, once I start the flight at FS Economy, I can um, readjust the weight, the payload, to where I want it to be. Because FS Economy doesn't care about weight. It only cares about fuel burn. That's all that it cares about. So as long as you don't, you know, with this plane, it locks out the ability to manage your payload. And that's not good because it throws all the weight at the tail section. So this plane, the CG goes different. Like it's it's not where it should be. Uh, the CG does change and there's no way to go in there and correct it because the developer locked it down to where you cannot change the passengers. Like for FS Economy, I could haul six passengers in this TBM but let's say for performance purposes, I don't I don't want that much weight. I only want to simulate two passengers. But FS Economy doesn't care, so I could, you know, reduce the the, the payload to just two passengers, adjust the center of gravity, and I would have you know a a real good. I probably would be a little bit faster. I'd be lighter, and like I said, FS Economy doesn't care. But this developer and I've mentioned it on the forums asking them to change that to where I won't have that anymore to where I can actually go into the payload manager and adjust it but right now he locks it down so once you start the flight the airplane like you can tell all the weight just goes to the tail because the front nose will come up a little bit so it messes up your CG so I don't use this airplane with FS economy at all not until they fix that then I will To procedure, to an approach, BRNAV, LPV, from Credo, so 
the borrow on that is four sixty. I'm just gonna load it. We'll have that ready. Calling Denver Center is quite a bit static. Um, ADIS at Palo Alto is 132.27, so get that up, 132.27. Probably too far away to get the weather, but we'll see. Yep, too far away. Go back to monitoring guard. So I monitor guard on COM2 and whatever assigned frequency on COM1. That's why I did IFR, because it is overcast today. Descend and maintain file level 180, contact NorCal approach 120.9 or 5. Descend and maintain file level 180, contact NorCal 120.9 or 5, 1399. Alright, so we're going to go down to 180. And we'll do vertical speed down. take out some of this torque so we don't over torque it on the way down NorCal 12095 so now we're on uh, NorCal NorCal approach, TBN 1399 or flight level 202 for 180. Air 1399 or NorCal approach, Roger. So we're going to ask from DoCal, the RNAV 31 via circling approach to 500 AGO. So as long as we see we can stay at 500 AGO. Uh, Oh, over torque. That's why you got to keep an eye on that when you're descending. So, circling. We can do circling at uh, 460, but that's okay. I'm just going to do it at uh, 500, it'd be easiest. But we're going to pick up the RNAV. We're going to end up 
getting vectored from San Jose to Docal. Grab this RNAV and then we'll do a circling approach because the wind's coming from the other way. I've never done a circling approach into this airport, so we'll see what happens. I should be able to see the airport by 500. Uh, the weather right now is it's raining, I think. Um, Palo Alto. No, it's not raining. The winds are 140 at 11. That's why I need to do the uh, this other thing. We're going to land on 1 3. Circling. RNAV 3 1 for circling. 1 3 approach. Speed 1 3 9 9 after the Linden VOR. Descend and maintain 1 2000. Palo Alto altimeter 3004. After the Linden VOR, descend to 1 2000. Altimeter 3004. 1 3 9 9. Okay. After land in VOR, which is right there. So we've got eight miles. Then we'll descend to 12,000 feet. Let's uh, delete Credo. Yeah, when winds are 130 at 11 knots, definitely going to have to do circling. Looks like the uh, threshold will be 85 knots. Stall for landing configuration 61. See, I've got this app that you guys can look at. And it does all the calculations for you for the TBM. Just look up um, TBM performance, TBM perf on any of your, you know, iOS or Android. And it's totally free. And it gives you so much information. It's really great with this airplane. Let's check our uh, temperature in the cabin. Still at 20, so we can warm that up a little bit. So now it's starting to rise to cabin temperature. And 12,000. NorCal approach TBL 1399 are leaving 180. Roger. Um, Barrow, you said 304. 12,000. Turn on the radar, weather radar. 
Probably not going to show much. Turn a pulse light on and make it easier to see us. Still not close enough for ATIS. Fuel is even, 56, 52. 13900 to send a maintain, uh, correction to send a maintain, 6000. He sent a maintain, 6000, 13900. Four Hotel Julia Spokane Ground. Good morning, say, er, good afternoon. Say again. So the missed approach is climb to 14,000, then climbing right turn to 3,000, direct to the San Jose VOR. All right, so if I do a left traffic circling approach, and if I go Julia missed, then all I got to do is fly over the runway and then fly direct to the San Jose VOR. So it would be 3,000 feet and hold at San Jose. Once you are cleared in a, an approach, an IFR approach, you're automatically cleared. i got to watch my speed. I don't want to get over 250 knots. But you're automatically cleared to fly the missed approach procedure. Yeah. The only time this plane is super fast is when you're descending. <laughs> I 
Yeah, it's still not getting the ATIS. What is it? Oh, I have the wrong frequency. Duh. It's 13527. There we go. All right, 13011. That's why we're going to use runway 13. So we uh 10 mile, 1500 view. Yeah, we should be okay. I don't need to know souls on board, and I don't. I think you gave me fuel. I don't need that either. I need to know where are you parked in your aircraft type. I don't know what a DR400 is. It's uh, Robin, I think, isn't it? DR400? November 4, Hotel Julian Roger. Do you have the ATIS? Number 9 or 4, Hotel Juliet, uh, grab the ATIS, hold short of taxiway, golf for runway 21. It's like we're going to beat the rain. It's raining San Francisco, but not at Palo Alto. It's not showing up on next ride at all, though. It's weird. It's showing up on the... Well, actually, it's probably pinging off the mountains. That's not weather. That's Rider seven eight Alpha Papa Centennial Ground Information. Whiskey is current. Runway one seven left. Taxi via Alpha. Oh, throttle is very touchy. Right off the Papa Roger, and you said northwest departure. And we're low enough for birds, so we're going to go ahead and. Uh, Close up the inert separator. It takes about 45 seconds. Cabin pressure. It's coming down. Fuel's even. Three nine or nine or contact North Cal approach one three five point six five. We'll see you. North Cal one three five point six five one three nine nine or we'll see you. Three five six five. Salt Lake City ground runway one six left taxi via hotel. Change. CTAF eighteen six. NorCal approach TM 1399 or 6000 current with weather at Palo Alto. TM 1399 or NorCal approach San Jose altimeter 3004. Stay pressure plus. I like to do the GPS RNAV runway 31 approach from Ducal for uh, circling 13. Actually, you, you probably don't care if it's a circling approach, do you? I'm not for uncontrolled airports, but if you can expect that, same. Roger, 1399, thank you. All right, so yeah, that's what I thought. She doesn't, it makes no difference to her if I do a circling approach or not. Um, only if it was a towered airport, I guess, okay. Man. You said you want to take the approach from Docal, correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. From Docal, 1399. All right, so Docal, and then so the final approach fix is Pud B at 2200 across Docal at 4500 or above. Three nine nine, expect direct Docal. Plan direct for Docal one three nine nine. Uh, so it'll be. Three nine nine, expect direct Docal one three nine nine. Three nine nine, expect direct Docal one three nine nine. Three nine nine, expect direct Docal one three nine nine.
be Nerd Bart, the beat machine, yeah. <laughs> the beat machine, it certainly is. Fernando Seveni Alpha Papa, uh, Centennial Tower, wind variable of three, right down departure, proof runway one seven left, clear for takeoff. Are you heading one nine or zero? Descend four thousand. One three nine nine. One ninety. One ninety and four thousand. And the altimeter is thirty oh four. So that's still good there. Five, runway one, six left, clear for takeoff. Dole cow is 4,500, so it's curious she's having me go down to that far. Anyway, um, uh, CTAF 18.6, I'm already there. 18.6. That's a football field, and that's cool. Clear direct Oak Cow, cross the Cow at then 4,000 or above, cleared our nav runway 3 1 approach. Clear direct to Doe Cow, cross Doe Cow at 4,000 or above, cleared our nav 3 1 approach 1399. Doe Cow, direct, enter, nav. Delta 1756, climbing 10,000. Delta 1756, uh, Salt Lake City departure, radar contact, leaving 10,000. I need to activate that. Delta 1756, leaving 10,000, clear direct Corver, uh, climb base to Excel Mate 2, follow 230. Out of 10, we're going to Corver and uh, via the uh, Delta 1756. Why can't I go? Arnav, Credo. Let's activate. And we've got flight plan 
clear. Docal, menu, activate, direct to, activate. All right, now we're tracking. Jeez. So PUD B is 2200. And we can drop our gear. Do takeoff flaps. Had to activate the entire approach. It's going to turn me right before this hill. Right, so we'll do that light on. So we're good there. Got our little AOA thing. Julia, Roger, and uh, Spokane, Alpha, Kilometer 2995. Alright, Docal's, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, we got like 8, 9, 10, 12 miles. Jeez, this is a long uh, approach. So let's uh, arm. VNAV, and we'll go down to 2200. So there's the VNAV. It should grab here. It should grab that thing. Is it? Is it? Yep. And PFD. Yeah, the pathway doesn't really work, so that's okay. So then twenty two hundred at Puppy, we'll arm approach, and then we can go down to 460 MSL or 500 AGL. So we'll go down to 2200. Oops. Let's do that. Let's be above 35 and then pub B is 2200, yeah. So then we'll arm approach when we get to uh, just before pub B. And then we'll reset the missed approach for uh, 3,000 for direct to San Jose and hold. All right, so we'll arm approach. Once we have an altitude hold, which we do now, we'll be able to um, reset the MCP. So 
So we'll go ahead and reset the. Uh, I'll reset that in a second. Getting my flaps and everything into the landing config. 110, here comes the glide path. Skyway 4237, clear to Oco Regional Airport. Southern one departure, two peacock. All right, Astro. now we can uh, reset this for 3,000. after departure. Departure frequency 135.5 and squawk. And we can bring this down to um, do 90 knots. So we can bring it down to about 1,000. Delta 1756, contact Salt Lake Center 128.72. Correct. Yeah, 7. 2872, Delta 1756. NorCal approach, TBM 1399. Am I clear to change frequency? Terminated. Report out for cancellation. Missed approach, airborne. This frequency or on the ground 122.2. Change your approach frequency approved. Change our frequency approved for TB on 1399. Thank you. I think she was talking to me. All right, so Palo Alto traffic, TB on 1399. -er. Be entering for a left downwind runway 13. Palo Alto traffic. All right, auto pilot off. We're at 1,000 feet. over here and we'll do a circling approach because of the wind Palo Alto is a golf course I don't know what this shelf is, so go down to 500. I didn't think about that. Hello, Auto Traffic, TBM 139, turning left base, runway 13, Palo Alto. Palo Alto Traffic, TBM 139, turning final, 13, Palo Alto. Harder than I thought it would be. I didn't realize I was going to do a circling approach.
Yeah, bounced. It's a very short runway. It's only like 2,000 feet. Not my best landing. It's all good. Flaps up. Do flight idle for two minutes. We'll park right here. Parking brake. Turn those off. Go to 122.2, cancel the IFR. Norcal approach TBM 1399 and cancel IFR. I'm on the ground. So 1399 IFR cancellation received. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you too. See ya. Um, let's see here. Not bad, not bad. If the aircraft did not re Port and maintenance, you are free. Oh yeah, let's go check that out. <laughs> um, all right, one minute, 40 seconds, so we're good enough. There. I was worried about the Bravo shelf. Um, I didn't think about what that minimum was. I'll look at that, see how close that is, but Turn off this taxi light. Turn off the environment, pressure, bleeds. Affirmative. Uh, turn off the inert separator. Turn off the gen. Turn off the autopilot and fuel select. Yeah, we'll see if I broke anything here. Good to be worried, but you were on an IFR plan, auto clearance through Bravo. Oh, I didn't think of that. Hmm. I did not think of that. That makes sense. Alright, so we'll do fuel cutoff. I'm still curious, though, what that shelf was. Because I'm used to staying at a thousand feet for that pattern. So I got a little bit too low, which kind of messed up my visual. No excuses. Um, all right, let's turn that thing off. Turn that off. The four two zero Tango Whiskey Squawk six four five zero Ident. If taken the destination, request a cruise altitude. Uh, 
going to turn the oxygen off. Nav light, crash bar. Let's turn all these lights off. And before I forget, disconnected. All right, let's check out the maintenance, see if we broke anything. All right, here's, all right, we didn't break anything. Airframe, it's good. Main thing is the engine and the landing gear. Cool, I didn't break nothing. Still not gonna look very pretty though. We'll do a replay. Um, double tap, hey bud. Flights are going good. We're gonna see how that landing looked. Otherwise, it was the flight went well. One reason is IFRO and BFR cross country, no worrying about getting clearances through the classes. That's interesting, yeah. Most IFR will be above 10,000 feet though, and most Bravos only go up to 10,000. Some are higher depending on the ground elevation. All right, so replay. Plus, I was dropping out of the sky like crazy. Yep, I bounced. That's because I had the um, sync rate. I had too much too much gravity and I was full I had full six passengers on board with the weight so that was uh that was the bounce let's see what it looks like to passenger File IFR on every cross country flight. Have yet to be get above ten thousand. That's cool. I never thought of doing that. I guess I like flying higher because I can see more. I can see further. Yeah, I think I flared just in enough time to where I didn't damage anything. So that that was didn't look as bad from that perspective. curious what that has I want to do the notice the RNAV thing San Francisco so like you said it doesn't matter I didn't think of that but the shelf is uh, 3,000 so I was okay staying at a thousand feet all the way to this shelf actually so I had plenty this is all below 3,000 so I was at a thousand feet if I just would have kept that circle I would have been much better but I was worried about these shelves for some reason but yeah 
so it was coming across. I knew the um, the other runway three one is right traffic, so I knew one three was left traffic coming over the water. I knew I wasn't going to fly over this uh, mainland. But if everything goes, you know, as planned, it wouldn't be entertaining. So that made me think, you know, about about this shelf. I didn't think about that before my approach, and now I know if you're an IFR that you're clear into this Bravo. That's cool. But see, this this shows a missed approach to right turn. So I figured I'm good to at least out here somewhere. Make this turn. There's no bridge or anything. Just make right turn. So as long as I stay within close, um, what's it, 2,000 feet for Palo Alto is their ceiling. So I could stay within that circle and be fine. Uh, talking real life. Oh, I know you were talking real life. Whoops. I forgot to bring that up. But this is a fun little challenging airport to come into for sure. Very, very short runway. So I had to, you know, hit it right at 90 knots. Or I could have slowed down to 85. But it's all good. Well, thanks, M9. Nerdbark. Gizmo. Stream Elements. <laughs> That's my bot. Thanks, guys. I will catch you next time. Um, tomorrow... I'll stream, but it's going to be a later stream in the afternoon tomorrow. And tonight, I might fly out of DCA. We'll see. But otherwise, I'm going to throw on some uh, San Francisco ATC for you guys to listen to while I get this shut down. Appreciate the chat, guys. Catch y'all later. Chase out. Alaska 1779, contact open center 125.85, today. 285, Alaska 1779, good day. Norcal, good afternoon, Alaska 1394, 900 on the city. Alaska 1394, Norcal departure, better contact. I'm unrestricted, maintain level 190. Unrestricted 190, Alaska 1394. Alaska 1394, turn left heading 010, vectors for sequence, expedite your climb through 4000, please. 010, heading, I'll hurry through.
Roger, 4000, Alaska, 1394. American 352, contact Oakland Center, 119.75, good afternoon. 119.75, good afternoon, American 352. Purchase, go 5243, checking in, right at 1500, climbing 190 zone. 5243, North Carolina departure, everybody contact, climb unrestricted, maintain for level 190. Climb unrestricted, climb level 190, let's go 5243. Alaska 1394, traffic 12 o'clock, 4 miles, south and eastbound. Uh, climbing out of 2,400, we're sure if I need to, but climb on your east side, uh, it's going 737. 1394, we're looking. Skyway 6243, turn left heading 030, vectors for sequence, maintain to level 190. Left turn heading 030, climb to flight level 190, Skyway 6243. 